Hello everyone, and welcome. In today's video, we'll be travelling to Tucson, Arizona, where on the 8th of January 2011, at a Safeway supermarket during a constituency meeting, 22-year-old Jared Lee Lofner would open fire in the car park in what was a targeted attack aimed at Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Just what led Jared to commit this atrocity is what we will be looking at today. But before we do, if you like true crime content, I make weekly videos discussing a range of cases, some well known, others perhaps not so. So if you want to see more of my content, please like, share and subscribe, as well as hitting the notification bell so you're kept up to date with new uploads, as well as sharing my videos with those you know who would like content like this, as it really helps the channel out. I also really appreciate the support too. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. Jared Lee Lufner was born on the 10th of September 1988 in Tucson, Arizona. He was an only child to parents Randy and Amy Lufner. The family were described by neighbours to be a very private family. Jared's peers would say that as a child, he wasn't allowed to play outside with them and he would end up watching them from the window while they played. Lufner attended Mountain View High School but would drop out in 2006. It was at this point that people began to notice that Jared's personality began to change significantly. Lufner worked at a Quiznos restaurant until he was sacked after his strange behaviour became noticeable to customers, to the point where they would be disturbed by him. Shortly after, Lufner would briefly volunteer at a local animal shelter, where he would be responsible for walking dogs. However, he was terminated from this role after his manager reported that Jared was walking the dogs where they didn't want them walked. When the manager explained why they didn't want the dogs walked there, Jared appeared to not understand this. Jared was known to abuse substances. He would drink alcohol to excess and smoke marijuana, as well as dabble in psychedelic drugs such as LSD and magic mushrooms, although Jared claimed to have not drank or taken drugs, even tobacco, since 2008. Lufner tried to join the US Army, but was rejected as unqualified for service in 2008 after he admitted to marijuana use on numerous occasions while undergoing the application process. According to records, Lufner was registered as an independent. He is known to have voted in 2006 and 2008, but not 2010. As for who he voted for, this was never confirmed. People who knew Jared said that he didn't watch TV, he disliked the news, and he also didn't listen to political radio. They would say that his political leanings were neither on the left or right wing spectrums, although one former friend would describe his views as left wing, quite liberal radical. However, to claim this did seem somewhat contradictory, as Jared was known to express the view that women shouldn't hold positions of power. On the 25th of August 2007, Jared Lofner attended an event that Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords was hosting. While there, he had the opportunity to ask a question to her. His question was, what is government if words have no meaning? This strange question confused Gabrielle, who failed to answer the question in a way that Lofner deemed satisfactory. Gabrielle Giffords would write to Lofner, thanking him for attending, but at this point, Lofner declared that Giffords was a fake and that he grew to have a strong disliking towards her. The letter also misspelled his name as Lofni, which further soured Lofner's opinion of Giffords. The strange question is backed up by the views he expressed on his YouTube channel Class It Up 10, where he would post nonsensical videos about currency not being backed by gold or silver, literacy and the meanings of words. He would also develop a strong interest in conspiracy theories, including 9-11, the New World Order, and firmly believed that the 2012 apocalypse was a true event that would actually happen. One site he frequented above top secret, itself a site dedicated to conspiracy theories, would be one place where Lofner would share his views, but even the viewers of this site wouldn't react warmly to his opinions. Jared also had an obsession with lucid dreams and would try to learn how he could control the dreams he had. He was also very outspoken in his condemnation of religion. Jared would state that God couldn't be possible and even wrote, I won't trust in God in online forums 
and YouTube. He also declined to state his religion on his army application form. In 2010, now a student at Pima Community College, Lofner would interact with the college police five times between February and September. These were mainly for classroom and library disruptions. He would also make inappropriate comments in class. On one occasion, a girl had written a poem about an abortion she had. The class described it as a very emotional poem, with the girl teary-eyed as she read it. However, during this reading, Jared would make comments about terrorism and suggested that a bomb should be strapped to the fetus and make a baby bomb out of it, laughing to himself in the process. Naturally, the class were disgusted by these comments. In September 2010, college police would find a video shot by Lofner, which was filmed on the school grounds. The video shows Jared walking around the school, declaring that the college was unconstitutional, illegal, and one of the biggest scams in America. Upon finding the video, the school would suspend Jared. The school told him that they would consider reinstating him should he seek psychiatric evaluation, but Jared declined. While there was no doubt that Jared was seen by many as a strange individual, he had not expressed any signs of violence. However, this was all going to change on the 8th of January, 2011. According to sources, Lufner purchased a 9mm Glock pistol from a sportsman's warehouse in Tucson on the 30th of November, 2010. The gun was purchased legally after completing the required forms and passing a background check. On the 15th of December 2010, he would post his final video on the Class It Up 10 channel talking about conscience streaming, currency, literacy and mind control. The night before the attack, Lufner left a voicemail on a friend's phone saying the following, Hey man, it's Jared. Me and you had good times. Peace out later. He then posted an update on his MySpace account at 4.12am. Dear friends, please don't be mad at me. The literacy rate is below 5%. I haven't talked to one person who is literate. I want to make it out alive. The longest war in the history of the United States. Goodbye. I'm saddened with the current currency and job employment. I had a bully at school. Thank you. P.S. Plead the fifth. On the morning of the attack, Lufner purchased ammo at the Walmart store on North Kotaro Road at 7.28am after unsuccessfully purchasing ammo at another Walmart store 25 minutes earlier. At 7.34am, he was stopped by Arizona Game and Fish Department Officer Alan Edward Forney for running a red light. However, as there were no warrants for Jared, he was allowed to leave were warned to drive carefully. He then took a taxi to a Safeway supermarket location in Casa Edo, where Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords was hosting another of her well-known Congress on Your Corner meetings, where she would travel to different locations to talk with her constituents. At 10.10am, Jared Lofner approaches the table where Gabrielle Giffords is standing. He produces the 9mm Glock and shoots Giffords in her forehead. He was approximately three feet away from her when he let off the shots. He then turns to his left and opens fire at the crowd at random. One of the people hit was politician Ron Barber, who was hit in the thigh and face. However, in an attempt to rescue Barber, Federal District Judge John Roll pushed down and shielded Ron Barber, but was shot in the back by Lofner. After firing approximately 32 rounds, he stopped to reload. While reloading his weapon, he dropped his loaded magazine onto the floor, where bystander Patricia Maish managed to get to the magazine before Lofner. Another bystander then hit Lofner with a folding chair, but injured his own elbow in the process. Eventually, Bill Badger, a 74-year-old retired US Army colonel, who was also shot after one of Lofner's bullets grazed the back of his head, managed to tackle Jared to the ground, where he was bundled on by Maish, Roger Sulzgeber, and Joseph Zamudio. The attack lasted a total of 17 seconds. In total, six people died in the attack and another 13 more were injured. Gabrielle Giffords, the main target of the attack, 
miraculously were still alive and conscious despite being shot in the head. Gabrielle was rushed to the University Medical Center where she underwent emergency surgery. John Roll, 63, who pushed Ron Barber to the ground in an effort to save him was successful. However, it would come at the cost of his own life. Gabriel Zimmerman, 30, was a community outreach director for Giffords. He was killed in the attack, becoming the first congressional staffer killed in the line of duty. Dorothy Morris, 76, would also pass away during the attack, while her husband George would survive the rampage. Phyllis Schneck died from gunshot wounds inflicted on the day of the attack. She was a 79-year-old homemaker. Dorwin Stoddard was a 76-year-old retired construction worker. He and his wife Mary were attending the Congress on Your Corner event on the day. When the shooting started, he and his wife dropped to the floor. Dorwin shielded his wife by laying on top of her. Lofner would shoot both, injuring Mary, who would survive. However, for Dorwin, he would be shot in the head, killing him. Finally, Christina Taylor Green was the youngest of the victims, aged nine. She died from a gunshot wound to the chest. She was born on September the 11th, 2001, the day of the 9-11 attacks. She had featured in the book Faces of Hope, Babies Born on 9-11. Her neighbour who took her there on the day, Susan Heilman, was also reportedly injured, but survived. By the time police arrived, Jared was subdued and not resisting. He informed police and those present that he would be pleading the fifth. At the scene, police would recover 31 shell casings, as well as two magazines in his front pocket and earplugs he used to muffle the gunshot sounds. Furthermore, upon searching the Lofner residence, evidence found at the home included the letter Gabrielle Giffords sent Jared thanking him for attending her 2007 Congress on Your Corner event. However, there was also another note which investigators found in a safe which read, I planned ahead. My assassination. Love. Jared. Giffords. Police would also find two 12-gauge shotguns in his garage. It was believed he was unable to retrieve the weapons after an argument with his father on the morning of the attack before he left for the Walmart. A black bag which also belonged to Lofner was found by a man walking his dog. The bag contained ammunition, which police believed was dumped by Jared after he fled his home after said argument with his father. Jared Lofner was charged in federal court with one count of attempted assassination of a member of Congress, two counts of murder of a federal employee, including Judge Roll, and two counts of attempting to murder a federal employee. He was indicted on three of the charges on January 19, 2011. He was held without bail and kept isolated from the other inmates for 23 hours a day. On the 24th of January 2011, after Lofner's attorney requested that the judge residing over the case enter a plea on his client's behalf, the judge entered a not guilty plea. When asked if Lofner understood the charges against him, the attorney replied that they were not raising that issue. On the 3rd of March 2011, a federal grand jury indicted Lofner on additional charges of murder and attempted murder for a total of 49 counts. On the 9th of March 2011, Lofner pleaded not guilty to all 49 charges. On the 25th of May 2011, the same judge ruled that Lofner was incompetent to stand trial and had to undergo psychiatric treatment where he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. On the 26th of June 2011, the same judge ruled that prison doctors could forcibly medicate Lofner with antipsychotic drugs in order to make him fit to stand trial. However, this was overturned on the 12th of July 2011, although prison doctors would still be able to forcibly administer tranquilizers should Lofner present a risk to himself or others. The reason for the overturning was due to the presumption of innocence principle afforded to him, like any other person awaiting trial. Despite the ruling, Prison doctors resumed the forced drug administration a week later, citing Washington v. Harper. They stated that the purpose was required in order to control the level of danger Lofner posed to himself and others. After many back and forths, it was eventually determined in March 2012 that the forced drug administration could continue after a federal appeals court 
rejected the request by Lofner's lawyers to stop the treatment. He was eventually found fit to stand trial on the 7th of August 2012. Lofner would plead guilty to 19 counts. This was enough to spare him from receiving the death penalty. Finally, on the 8th of November 2012, Lofner appeared in court, where he was sentenced to serve seven consecutive life terms, plus 140 years in prison, without parole. Discussions surrounding the motive for the attack were swirling around media and online circles. Journalists suspected that Lofner may have been anti-Semitic due to his anti-religious views, as well as Giffords also being Jewish. However, the Anti-Defamation League found that Lofner had more of a general dislike towards religion, and also of government. In fact, he appeared to be particularly disdainful of Christians. Focus also moved to political motivations for the attack. Again, some disputed that Lofner may have been affiliated with far-right movements due to his ramblings about currency, gold and silver. But again, looking at his views overall, it seemed that he favoured neither left or right. Despite Gabrielle being a Democrat, he was also noted to have hated the sight of President George W. Bush, a Republican. It appears to be more widely accepted by psychologists who have examined the case, that while it could be interpreted as a political attack, it was more likely that the attack was a result of Lofner's own mental instability, coupled with his personal hatred towards Giffords after failing to answer his strange question and misspelling his surname. He was considered by Dr. Alan Lippmann to be a disorganised, delusional, disruptive, psychotic individual with an incoherent political ideology. Gabrielle Giffords' recovery has been a long one, which continues to this day. However, it's been nothing short of a miracle. Gifford stepped down from her position as Congresswoman on the 22nd of January 2012 in order to focus on her recovery. Since the attack, she has been able to regain her speech and can walk, despite difficulty with both, often struggling to find the right words to say. She has even relearned to play the French horn, which she played before the attack. She played the instrument while speaking at the Democratic National Convention in August 2020. Her husband, former astronaut Mark Kelly, has been at his wife's side every step of the way and supported her through her recovery and even finishing her sentences. They would found a political action committee called Americans for Responsible Solutions, the aim of which is to promote gun control legislation after the Sandy Hook shooting in 2013. Kelly is also looking to join the US Senate later this year after winning Arizona's special election in November 2020. This case caught my eye because of the photo that was released of Jared having his mugshot taken. That cold, evil stare and sickening smile. It drew me in, and I was unaware of this case, being a Brit. However, after coming away from researching this case, I found myself confused at Jared as a person. I would have to side with those who believe that this wasn't a politically motivated attack. Jared was mostly incoherent and clearly an unwell individual. I believe what sparked his plans was simply his offence at his question not being answered by Gabriel, as well as the misspelling of his surname. He was already distrusting of government and had a sense of grandeur about him. So when he saw his congresswoman unable to answer what he thought was a simple question, which it wasn't, as well as make what he perceived to be a simple mistake, it isn't a stretch to think that he felt personally slighted by this. Had Giffords been a Republican, the outcome would have been no different. Thank you for watching the video. I wanted to wrap this up by thanking those who have subscribed to the channel over the past 8 weeks. Recently we passed 250 subscribers, which I'm really grateful to you all who helped me get there. Perhaps we can get to 300 by the end of the year? We'll see. Until next week, take care and goodbye. For now.